We have three amazing agents. What makes you excited? I like the action. How much do you want to make? Write that on a check. I want this info. That stuff excites me. We're going to change lives out there. Ready? I want to go to some tough, fun questions that I have. Tough what questions? Fun. Fun. I don't know if you guys know, but when people are insecure, they in project. Sometimes people, they, to make themselves feel better, they say things because it's not about you. They just say that because if it's not happening for them, they come up with six excuses that you have that and they don't have that. That's why it's not happening. So I hear all the time about all three of you. I find myself sometimes defending you and saying that's not actually true. But each one of you have a story that I heard. But I want to ask, share it with you what I hear and give you the opportunity to share it now. Uh -oh. um, who would you like to go not first? Not me. <laughs> La ladies first. <laughs> <laughs> Are you sure? I don't know, what is it? <laughs> you do really well when the foreclosures and are your market comes. And you do really well when they go away. And I hear often, well, when there's no foreclosure last three years and you have done 200 transactions a year by yourself. So when I hear that people say, well, you know, all of our transactions are foreclosures. I'm like, mm, that is not true. And they're like, yeah, she's a foreclosure queen now. I'm like, no, she has. And we, you always talk about one leg on each side, and I prepare for both market. But you always done well no matter what. Actually, if you look at your numbers year over year has gone up, they believe that the reason you got foreclosures is because your father <laughs> was vice president of Fannie Mae. So there's two big rumors, two, right, uh, that two. I heard from the beginning. One was that the reason that I did well with the foreclosure market is because my dad was a powerful man at the bank. My dad is a wonderful human being. He is rich in love, but not in money. He's a doctor of math. He is an engineer. He's retired now. But um, my dad has zero, zero. Like how, I want to know where that rumor started. I want to be a fly on the wall where that one started. The other one, I don't know if I can, oh, yeah, this please. is actually really interesting. This was, I was with a company um, I'm editing myself. No, no, I want, I want, no, just be I, you. I was very young. I was with a company um, that was the largest independent uh, in the state of California. And somebody started a rumor that the reason I did well was because I was sleeping with the owner of the company, yes. which was not true. And I said, well, if that's the case, because his headquarters was in Beverly Hills, why am I selling in Pacoima? <laughs> The cheap ones, right? Yeah. So, um, those two rumors came about at the same time, actually. That's interesting. And I just, it's So, between your dad and your other broker, you flourished. Like, yeah, you just that's did what it such is. A you know, that's it. That's so, I find is. myself correcting, and then finally, I was like, you know, maybe I should not answer a fool who came up with their own conclusion on this instead of knowing your business model. And I'm glad you get to say, because I, get, I say it all, often. But I want them to know that I admire what you have done by yourself. I wish that I had somebody feeding me the business. It would be a whole lot easier. easier. I wish my dad was a powerful person at some bank that I would just say, hey, yo, dad, how, where are my listings? Mm -hmm. That would be nice. <laughs> <laughs> We're clear now. Um, Eric, you ready about your story? I'm really curious because um, I, I don't think I'm as important as these two people, so I don't know. No, you know are. So you let, are. Me, let me tell you what we hear or mm -hmm. I hear. So you were 19, you did really well. At one point you were competing with me as a team leader. So mm -hmm. I had to resign because I was like, I'm not competing anymore. Sure. And then I let you totally not become true. number one. <laughs> and then thank God you chose to be in business with us. But then I, get, I got to see your transactions, actual listing contract. And someone, when I shared with them that Eric is in the office at this time and calls and they're like, are you sure? I think he's all over the town. I said, yeah, he doesn't take listings in just one pocket. He's all over. And they said, don't you think he takes listings because he charges 1%? Interesting. And I said, mm, actually, that is not true. On your listing contract, you charge 6%. Mm -hmm. You take 3.5% mm -hmm. because our Keller Williams policies, you give 25 minimum outside. So you run a real good business, profitable business, and they have this 
think that since you went too far, most probably you just took it for very little. And you also don't give up your listings. You fight all the way to reduce. You <laughs> watching this right now. Yeah. It's, it's true. <laughs> so you're very involved in your own business, and you don't say, "Okay, I'm not talking to clients because I took a this kind." You're very involved, and you go all the way to close the transaction. When did you start believing that I deserve more commission? So I have a business consultant. I've had one for a very long time, and I remember I'd say back in 2014 when I went from leadership to sales. I said I'd like to make more money. And he said, it's very simple, you ready? I said, sure. He said, uh, take higher price listings and charge more commission. And I'm like, why didn't I think of that? That's genius. Um, and so I have a niche and I do charge more commission. I charge 6%. I have a niche where I don't, I, I deal with a lot of properties that uh, unfortunately have a stigma in the market or they have a uh, buyer perception because it's been on the market before with someone else, good, bad, and different. It could have been a relative, it could have been their friend, it could have been the person that helped them buy the property. They weren't successful. So when I go in and I say, this is what we're gonna do, and this is what the commission's gonna be, um, and this is what we're paying the buyer broker, sometimes they ask me, well, why am I paying more money? And I say, well, the difference is, the, the, your concern is that this time you're actually gonna have to pay me. Um, and they say, well, I was paying less. Mm -hmm. Before and I say, well, how did that work out? Mm -hmm. um, and so it's it's usually it's it's a different program, and I can outline all the investment of resources and time that we put into it. Mm -hmm. But we do charge a uh, a premium on the listing side, um, and we give uh, two point five to the buyer broker. Um, we we have a couple admin fees because we have admin and staff and so mm -hmm. forth. People dot the i's and cross the t's. I want them people to know is like you really go through the entire process with everyone. Yeah, um, and the, the, the difference is, and the truth is that when I work with these sellers, uh, we're averaging somewhere between like 97 to 99% mm -hmm. list price against sell price. And some of the properties competing are, are, are transacting for uh, three to four percent less, maybe five sometimes. Mm -hmm. um, and I just show them the stats. And that's why um, if I don't think I can sell a property based on the price up front, I, I, I'd rather not just let them down. And I tell them at the meeting, you know, uh, at the end of my presentation, one of three things usually happens. You'll have the opportunity to list your home with me. You may decide not to list your home with me. Or if I can't help you, I'll let you know right away. Either way is fine. Well, Eric, why wouldn't you take my listing? I mean, I, do you really want me to go into that? And I tell them, if we don't, have an eye, if we don't see eye to eye and what mm -hmm. the expectation is, then we won't. And I, 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 I would like the competition to go out there, go, go against me and charge 1%, which would clearly make make the bigger differential between them mm -hmm. and myself and, and I think that was stacked the is that what's been happening <laughs> like <laughs> that's probably what's been stacking the deck in my favor but yeah but I, I think it's working and I'm, I'm personally very proud of you doing that okay. it, going back to what you said about the commission I had I was on a listing appointment they wanted 2.4 I told them it's worth 1.7 they said I'm crazy they listed with an agent in city way and they called nine months later to release with us and they offered um, I same price. We, uh, you know, I said, that's fine, 100,000 or less actually. And then they said, would you charge 4%? Because Jennifer used to charge us 4%. And I said, no. Um, and then they both were very aggressive. And I said, how about this? I'll just charge you nothing. They were surprised. They're like, are you sure? I said, absolutely. So I'll just charge you nothing. When we do close the transaction, you pay me my five, and then the next day you just feel nothing. And they stay quiet. I was like, what? And I was like, she didn't charge anything. They're like, yeah, charge four. I said, but she didn't sell. If you don't sell, you don't pay. So it was a perspective, and the, one of the partners kicked out of him. I was like, okay, he's messing with us. Well, just skip the conversation about the 5%. So it is much easier to have that conversation with the expired listing when you have a, they have a Pain point. Pain point on it, right? <laughs> um, and I think uh, the conversation about money, it's an awkward conversation. It it's a little bit uncomfortable because you get to a table and they know that you're, <laughs> you're applying for a job and they're going to cut you a check. Mm -hmm. And if they're considering you, they probably think that you're successful. And a lot of clients, they can add one plus one. So they start to have an experience where the client size my last year's income up. Of course. And they're kind of like, well, um, you don't really need this much and you know you could take this for less and it's i think that because i've failed so many times and had to walk out of a room mm. with the feeling of 
I should have just responded honestly and said, no, I'm not comfortable with this. Because I failed so many times, I'm a lot more comfortable saying this is what, what it is and if it's not okay, then that's totally okay. But it, it is awkward, it is uncomfortable, um, and I think it only um, gets better. Uh, it never gets better, but it, um, you can feel more comfortable about having that you particular. Become, you can yeah, become better. That, that, that it's never awkward with the, I mean, it's never better with the person, but you just become a little more fluid with them. It's kind of like, yeah, it's, it's, we're talking about money here and it, it's okay. You're not going to complain when you get your check, so let's do the right thing. And according to what the National Association of Realtors, 40% of the sellers do not bring up the commission. Agents bring it up. So if you actually stay quiet, mm. then they don't bring up. You don't have to discuss it. Um, Dennis, I have yours ready yeah. for the magical question. You were what? How old were you when you came to Studio City, the old office, one to seven? Um, 2008. And you came from lending? Lending. And that day, did you ever think you've been expert in one business model and be where you are today? Do I believe? I, I, I think so. I was a very ambitious young person. So Did I'm you gonna... think this is the product that you sell? Oh, this is the product? No, absolutely not. No, okay, but you probably. knew that I'm going to be successful. You I knew that I was going to be successful. I just didn't know that. Well, I remember you asked, it says, I want to get a coach. And yeah. I said, get a coach yes. now, right? And I remember you said, the coach says, go door knocking. I said, go door knocking. Yeah. A thousand homes, studio city, right? Yes. And I know that we talked recently about me and an area on door knocking. You said, I will do it all day, Harma, because when I drop off my kids, now that I live in that neighborhood, when I go back knocking, I just saw the father at school, so it's yeah. weird to knock. Yes. So you still are out there hustling. Yes. And the reason I want to share this because what I hear that, well, Dennis is lucky because he sells a lot of homes that all knew that he himself did it, and he works with one developer. Well, then I find myself in argument with saying, well, actually, it doesn't work with one developer. He works with, I don't know, 20. But more importantly, 50% that I know of your transactions are resale. Yes. They're not new constructions. Yes. And they don't know that. So I'm like, actually, it's production. If it's 200 of something, 100 million is new resale. Yep. And most people don't even have new construction. So he is alone, again, number one of the top team yeah. in the area. Do you sell only new construction? No, we do. <laughs> No, we did more sides and more transactions that are resale, which are regular homes last year mm -hmm. and the year before than new homes. So Would you take a listing in to look like for a condo for four hundred thousand? I hear I hear that I'm lucky all the time. Uh, he's lucky or he's he's tall and handsome or he's this and I'm like, why none of that has to do with anything. I am reading this book. it's called The Greatest Salesman in the World by Mohammed. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. Mm -hmm. And I'm going through uh, I read it and now I'm I'm listening to it in the car. And he said you could you could take a thousand steps and not hit what you want to hit and the thousand the thousand first step will be the right the right thing. So we, we work. You know, people that work will always succeed. Doesn't matter how talented you are, doesn't matter what education they have, doesn't matter what they look like, doesn't matter if they're tall, good looking, skinny, fat, it's just effort. That's all it is. 90% mm -hmm. effort, 10% talent. That, and that's, look, I can barely speak English, I can barely write English. I am tall. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but but, but it, it's all effort. It's always been the same thing for me. It's effort, energy, being positive, loving people, um, not being jealous of good things, not being of envious of things that other people have. Just, I want to do business. I want to work hard and I want to give. Which I think truly one thing that you said, loving yeah. people, I think I'll translate that to caring. Mm -hmm. When you do take the listing, you get emotional. It's like, I really care too. Yeah have this person get. So especially if they share their personal story, why I have to sell. My mom passed and I got this house, I'm, I need your help to do the garage sale to all the way that I don't have the money. If I don't sell this, I don't know how I'm gonna survive. Yeah. So those things becomes your emotional part. So when people say, do you work for the money? I'm like, they don't.